I'm Mary Sonic. Welcome back to our video series on lead user methods. The concept of a lead user is at the heart of our research process. In the first phases of a study, research teams interview lead users to gain insight into the future needs of the mass market. Then, in later phases, they work with innovating lead users to develop their new product and service concepts. The most common question that research teams ask us is, how do you find lead users? In this video, you will learn how teams go about meeting this challenge. Professor Eric von Hippel, author of The Lead User Concept, first explains the distinguishing characteristics of lead users, and from there, illustrates the unique and valuable information that lead users can provide. Then, lead user team coach Dr. Joan Churchill explains the process that teams use to find lead users and illustrates it with a real-world lead user project. Let's start with a review of the lead user concept. Who are lead users and how do they differ from the mass of users in your intended target market? Recall from an earlier video that they differ in two ways. First, they are ahead of a trend that is important in your target market. And second, they have a high incentive to solve the needs that they have encountered there at the leading edge. You can find those solutions they have developed and bring them back to your target market. It's important to understand that lead users are not the same as early adopters. Early adopters are the first to adopt commercially available products or services. Lead users experience a need before there's a responsive product or service to adopt. And so lead users have to develop a solution for themselves. Lead users can be at the leading edge of your target market, or as we shall see, they may be found in other applications altogether that are ahead of all the lead users in your target market. For example, lead users of braking applications in aerospace are ahead of even lead users in the automotive field. So automotive firms often find innovations in that advanced application. Lead users can be firms, they can be organizations, they can be individuals. They are users simply because they develop a solution in order to use it rather than to sell it. Boeing is an example of a firm acting as a lead user when it develops machine techniques for new materials. In this case, Boeing is a lead user because the machine innovations are for its own use. It's not intending to sell them. The inventors of skateboards and mountain bikes are examples of individual lead users. They develop them because of what they could do with them. The mass market of users followed later. Lead users in applications outside of your target market will often be the most likely sources of out-of-the-box solutions. As illustration, suppose that your firm makes sandpaper and has a major market among furniture refinishers. In the furniture refinishing field, a major trend involves the more careful preservation of the wood surface underneath the old finish. Lead users outside the furniture market might include those who refinish aircraft. They must avoid damaging the surface of the airplane metal when removing old paint, or they could radically reduce the strength of the metal. We turn our attention now to the types of information and insights that project teams will acquire from interviewing lead users. Teams find that lead users often have novel product and service ideas, or even prototype solutions that are pertinent to the problem areas they're researching. And very important, Lead users will often help teams improve their understanding of the critical emerging needs of targeted users by virtue of their experiences at the leading edge. Learning how your interviewees view a problem is as important as learning what they know about that problem. How they view it can create very valuable surprises and very fruitful changes in study direction for you. For example, consider a lead user study conducted by the 3M Medical Surgical Division. In the 3M medical product study, the team began by seeking to identify ways to improve infection control methods that were applied routinely to almost all surgical patients. Unexpectedly, the team learned from a lead user physician that a more critical problem had to do with being able to identify apparently normal patients who were in fact highly susceptible to infection. This new framing of the problem led the team to seek out lead users in the medical field who were developing better ways to quickly identify these special needs patients. The final result of the study was a new and breakthrough approach to infection control. Learning what is still a problem for your lead user interviewee is also very important. Even the best lead users sometimes have problems they can't solve. In such cases, project teams can respond 
by adding on a search for lead users with respect to that particular troublesome aspect of the issue. To illustrate, the 3M medical surgical team discovered that lead users in the medical field had not found a solution to the problem of applying material that would closely adhere to skin contours. Accordingly, the project team sought out makeup artists, regularly applying masks to actors' faces for Broadway productions. From these lead user artists, the team acquired valuable information about the methods to solve the problem of applying material to patient contours. True lead users, like the makeup artists, will provide teams with a wealth of unique and cutting-edge information pertaining to their innovation project. However, finding these rare people can be a major challenge. Next, Dr. Churchill takes you through the lead user search process that teams use to efficiently identify lead users. Dr. Churchill will illustrate the lead user search strategy using the lead user study conducted at Nortel Networks. First, some background on the Nortel Networks lead user project. Nortel Networks is a global internet and communications leader with capabilities spanning optical, wireless, local internet, and e-business. In 1999, Nortel Networks conducted a lead user study to uncover a whole new class of web applications for voice, video, and data. The targeted user segments were wireless internet consumers and businesses. Dr. Anthony Hall, director of the Human Centrics Group at Nortel, initiated the study as a way to identify breakthroughs that weren't possible with conventional innovation approaches. The lead user methodology allows us to work with people that experience the future uh, before most. And so by talking with those individuals, we can mine their innovations and commercialize them more readily. The Nortel Network Lead User Study was carried out by a four-person team led by Kelly Blasco, electrical engineer and senior advisor in market analysis. Now I want to walk you through the lead user search process, starting with the first step, identifying important trends. A search must always begin with a trend analysis. Because recall that by definition, lead users have needs that are ahead of others with respect to specific trends. Now the trend investigation is really the subject of another video, but the Nortel Network study will give you an idea of how this step is carried out. The team began with a review of current trade literature. Next, team members interviewed leading experts in a number of different fields, ranging from oil field operations and military applications, to aviation and public safety. Despite the diversity of experts we interviewed, each one identified mobility as the most critical attribute in the internet solutions they were using and the problems they were trying to solve. So these interviews verified that we were on the right track in deciding to focus on the critical mobility needs of wireless internet users. Let's say now that your team has zeroed in on a few major market trends. Recall then that the next step involves generating ideas on possible sources of lead users. Now here it's going to help you to consider types of individuals or firms that have a high incentive to innovate because of their leading edge needs. As an aid in thinking of lead user sources, the Nortel Networks team started by spelling out the key attributes that lead users should have. Based on the trends we identified, we decided that our lead users had to display one or more of three characteristics. First of all, the lead users had to be highly mobile. Secondly, they had to have a high need to communicate using both voice and data. And third, they had to have a critical need for real-time and location-based data. Among the targeted internet consumers and organizations, the team thought of law enforcement officers and paramedics as two possible lead user sources because they operate from mobile offices and require continuous, as it happens, information. In fields outside the target market, the team thought of specialists associated with the military who were working on wireless internet applications. Our thinking was that in battlefield operations, there is a strong need for getting the right information to the right people as conditions rapidly change. Now let's turn our attention to the actual networking process used to locate lead users. The networking technique is built on the fact that people who have a serious interest in a particular subject are likely to know someone who is more expert than they are. Team members conduct telephone interviews to network their way up to leading edge users. It would seem that lead users might also be found using some type of written screening questionnaire. 
A standardized survey simply won't provide enough information to tell you which people might be the actual lead users. Psychologist Joe Piso, a member of the Nortel Networks team, had a real knack for quickly tracking down lead users. And his approach is a good illustration of how the networking process works. Joe Piso found several lead users among researchers who studied the habits of animals in their natural environments. He found their names from citations in a magazine article on animal tracking and then interviewed each one to determine if they were true lead users. Well, before each interview, I did some reading and basic research on animal tracking so I could ask intelligent questions. Uh, then during the interviews, I focused my questions on assessing two areas, uh, the person's breadth of knowledge and their level of innovativeness. Uh, for instance, the animal tracker I found uh, had significant breadth of knowledge and experience. Uh, he'd tracked Arctic seals, elephants in Malaysia, uh, and sea turtles as well. Uh, he also was very familiar with other leading edge uh, animal tracking efforts from around the world. Uh, and, and he was innovative in his approach. Uh, for example, he envisioned a future where an animal could be tracked remotely with video, biological, and environmental data captured by intelligent technology on the animal. Uh, that data could then be monitored over the internet or even broadcast to schools. One final tip for your networking interviews. As Eric von Hippel emphasized, look for people who have really novel surprise information to offer your team. Through the interviews, there were a number of discoveries that were important to the team. Uh, for instance, we found that the lead users shared a common need uh, to obtain uh, real-time location-based information. Uh, and they didn't have time to wait for that information. Uh, another important learning was that uh, our lead users needed location-based information that was linked to them at all times. Based on these discoveries, the team sought out lead users among professional storm trackers, a group with a high need for both real-time and location-based data. Uh, we interviewed a number of storm chasers who were doing innovative work. Uh, we found that they had developed innovative ways to send and receive fast-changing weather data among multiple vehicles chasing unpredictable storms. The Nortel Networks team actually identified over 20 lead users using the search process we've described. And Dr. Anthony Hall told me that these lead users made important contributions to a very successful study. We achieved the results that we set out to achieve. We also learned a, a great deal from our lead users, both in their innovations and about their segments that they're trying to address. And then we had a lot of fun, too. It's probably one of the most fun methodologies that we've ever used. In summary, Professor Von Hippel and Dr. Churchill described a three-step process for efficiently locating lead users. And the reward for your team's effort will be the discovery of unexpected new insights and out-of-the-box solutions.